We're going to be working on lab 10. We're almost done with this material, almost done with intro to network analysis, I think it is. I'm taking so many classes that I forgot which one each one is. It is introduction to logic design. So this is lab 10 for introduction to logic design. We are again going to be using Quartus Prime. This is by Intel. And what we're doing here is we are taking lab 8 when we made it in multi-sim so it's good to have that pulled up we're going to take that and then we're going to make a verlog code for it and the easiest way to do this is if we have some kind of picture of that lab pulled up fortunately i have it included here but this is what mine looks like so it could look a little different mine's i think is pretty neat so i'm going to be going off of this i'm also going to be referencing the names of each of the components as the uh, values that are on top. So like the first AND gate is U1A, next is U2A, U3A, and so on and so forth. And that will allow us to actually um, write our code in a super easy to see fashion. So we're gonna click new project, and then we're going to click next. And now we want to save it into a location that's easily accessible. So I'm going to make a folder I'm going to call it 10. I'm just going to select, actually I'm going to go back and then I'm just going to select 10, select folder. We want to title this project uh, lab 10 and the reason why we're doing it is lab 10 is because this is lab 10. We're going to have to stick with this name throughout our um, code, our verlog code and also our test bench. So from here we will click next. We want to have an empty project. We'll click next click next through this. Now for the family, we want Cyclone 4E. And for the name filter, this is provided in the actual lab. And the filter that we're going to be using is this one. So we can click this. We want to make sure specific device selected. And then we will click next. From here in simulation, we're going to click model sim. And then we want to make sure the Verlog HDL is selected. We'll click next. And lastly, we'll click finish. And now our quarters prime will open our project. And now that our project is open, we can click this file up here. We're going to click Verlog HDL file. We're going to click OK. And then we're going to be inside of here and we're going to write our code. So to code for this, we have um, four inputs and two outputs. So we can start this off by first making our module and then it needs to be the same title as what we made this right here so lab 10 we need to include all of our variables so we are going to have a b c d f1 and lastly f2 we are going to end our line we're going to come down here we need to specify which is input and which is output our input is a b c and D, we'll end this line. We'll go into our output, and in our output we have F1 and F2. And just for consistency, I will make them capitalized, but they don't have to be. So we have F1 and F2 as our outputs, and A, B, C, D as our inputs. Now we need to define our wires, because all we've done so far is defined basically what our input DIP switch is. So now, and also our output LED bar. That's what we've defined so far. Now we are going to uh, define the wires, and then we're going to define the gates, connecting them with the wires. With this is why we have to do the wires first. So we're going to have wire, and we're going to organize this a little bit. We have our F1 up top, even though it's the last LED bar. I'm reading it from right to left here. Um, the F1 is up top. So we're going to create all of our wires in here. The UA1 or the U1A is an AND gate and so is U2A and U3A. Now I'm going to go from top to bottom and say wire AND1 AND2 AND AND3. These are the different wires that are coming out of these gates. So these are not the gates themselves but the wires coming out of each AND gate. And then we also have our OR 
we have these two OR gates now, U4A and U5A. Now, reading from left to right, because that's how we're going to do it here, we have U4A as the first OR gate. So we can come uh, on the same line, and we're going to have OR1, and so this will be the wire coming out of here. And then we're also going to have OR2, and then we're going to end this line. So we have all of those wires, and now we need for our F2. So for F2, we are going to have wire. Um, we can see that we have five NOT gates. So what I'm going to do is say NOT, and I'm going to call this 1. And then I'm actually going to do something cool. So I'm going to look at U15, U8A, and U7A all as one part, and we're going to define it here. So we have NOT1. Below it, we have our NOT2. And then after that, we have our AND gate. And this is going to be the first AND gate here. So it will be AND1. We'll have a comma. We'll go on to the next line. And then on this next line, we have, um, we have two more NOT gates. So this is going to be NOT3. And this NOT3 is U9A. And then we're going to have NOT4. And this is going to be U10A. Now, we're also going to have an AND gate that this outputs to, which is U12A. U12A is going to be the next AND gate that we're going to look at, so we'll call this AND2. And that's kind of it for that line. So going on to the next one, we have our fifth NOT gate. So we'll call this NOT5. And then we have um, both this line and this line that connect into an AND gate. So just for clarity, I'm going to move this out here and then we're going to have our AND gate right here. It's going to be our third AND gate here, so we'll call it AND3. And then lastly, we have all of this that goes into a OR gate, so we'll have this as OR1. Now there's a problem here with our wires. We can see that there's some naming conflicts between here and here. So to fix that, we'll just add a zero after these. I mean, you could add anything you want just to change the name. The only um, difference or the only thing is that the name has to be different. Otherwise, there will be naming conflicts. So just to keep it simple, I'm going to add a zero after all of these. Now we can start writing for our actual gates. So I'm going to look at F1 first. These were our F1 wires, and now we're going to do the F1 gates. To do the F1 gates, I'm going to go from right to left. So we're first going to look at U5A. This is the OR gate. And when we code this, we need to first define what it is. It's an OR gate. We now need to come up with a name for it. Um, I'm going to just call it OR gate, and then it's going to be uh, 2, because it's the second OR gate. U4A was our first OR gate that we were looking at, that we defined. Uh, we didn't really define it, but we're staying consistent for simplicity. And then inside of here, we're going to have three things. We're going to have our input and then our two outputs. So our input is going to be the very first thing and then our outputs are going to be the next two things. Our output, which is again the first thing, is going to be F1 because this is the last thing going into our LED bar. It's the last part going out. So we're going to have F1 here and then we need our two inputs. Um, up top we have U4A going in and we know U4A um, we're not getting the actual gate, we're getting the wire that goes from that gate. And we define that as OR1. So we're going to pass in here OR1. And then we're also going to pass in here our AND gate. And our AND gate is U3A. And we define this as AND3, this wire right here. Remember, not passing in the gate, my apologies for passing in the wire. So we have AND3 inside of here. And so that is our OR. We can look at our next OR, so we'll just have a comma here, and then we will have our OR gate 1. And so the output is going to be the OR1 wire. So we'll just write OR1 inside of here. And then we have two inputs. We have our AND1, this, was, this is a wire, and we have our AND2, which is also a wire. And so that's it for our OR gates here. And now we can make the AND gates for this part. So we have three AND gates here. We're going to have AND 
gate one. And then we know that the output is the wire and one. And then the input, if we look at it closely, we can see is C and D. And this is coming from the equivalent of our input DIP switch. Uh, we're gonna have a comma here because we have more AND gates to add. We're gonna have AND gates two, and we can easily say that this is the output wire AND two because of our easily defined naming. And then if we look at our inputs, if we look closely, we can see that it is A and B. And we now have our last AND gate that we're gonna come across. Make sure you have a comma here. And it will be AND gate three. We know the output is AND three, this is the wire. And the inputs, if we look closely, are B and C. And so that is it for our whole F1 function. Now we're gonna go ahead and graph the uh, F2. So our F2 is at the bottom, it's a little bit more complicated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at our first OR gate, the U6A. We're going to make that, and then we're going to look at the uh, first part, so the U15A, U8A, U7A. We're going to separate that into a part, and then the whole chunk on the lower part. So our first part, we're dealing with the last OR gate, the only OR gate that we have in here. We'll have OR, we'll have OR gates, it's our first, so one, but remember, we have zeros here. We're gonna keep it consistent with this. We know that our output is F2, so we're just going to have F2 here, and then we are going to have our two inputs. Our input is from U7A, the AND gate, and U13A, the AND gate. This is our first AND gate and the last AND gate, so one and three. Um, if we look at the wires that are coming off the AND gates, we define these as AND 10 and then AND 30. So that is that OR gate coded. And now we will move on to the next one. And I have separated this, but remember this is all part of the same thing. So we'll just draw a line here to indicate that we're still doing the same thing even if we're leaving a space, just to keep things organized. So inside of here, uh, we're going to look at the U15A, U8A, and U7A now. Starting with the U7A, this is our first AND gate, we will have AND, it's going to be AND gate 10. We know the wire coming out of this is just AND 10, and we know our input is NOT 10 and NOT 20. And so that is that line done. Now we need to code for the NOT gates. So we're going to have NOT not gate 10. This is the first not gate. We can see that the output is just going to be the not 10 wire. And our input, if we look closely, is C. So we can end this line. We can go on to the next. Actually, we don't want a semicolon here. We just want a comma because we need to define another AND gate or another not gate, sorry. We'll have not gate 20. This is the U8A not gate. And then we have the output wire of not 20 and if again we look super closely we'll see that the input is D from the input DIP switch and so this is our first part done or technically it's actually the second part because we've coded the OR gate and now we've coded the top and NOT gate section for F2 now we need to code the whole lower part and this should also be ended with a semicolon because we're not doing anything more inside of here so we're going to come down here, and now we're going to start going from right to left again. First thing we have on the right side is our U13A AND gate. We know that this is the last AND gate, and so it's going to be AND 30. It's the third AND gate. We'll have AND, AND gate 30. The output wire is AND 30. Our input is U12A and U11A. So our U12A is the second AND gate, so we will have the AND 20. And then our NOT, the U11A, is going to be the fifth NOT. So we are just going to have a NOT, and this is 50. Remember, these inputs are not the gates themselves, but the wires that are coming from the gates as outputs. 
Next, we are going to have, we'll just, we'll define the AND gate here. So we're going to now define U12A. So for U12A, what we're going to have is a AND gate. This is the second AND gate, so it's going to be 20. Um, we should name this AND gate 20, sorry. And then we have the output wire as AND 20. We have our two input wires as the NOT uh, 1, 2, 3. So U9A and U10A, NOT 30 and NOT 40. These are again the inputs. And so that is it for our AND gates. We've coded all of our AND gates for this section. Now we're going to move on to the NOT gates, the U9A and U10A, and we will come back to our U11A. We'll code that in a second. So we have our NOT here, and then we'll call this NOT gate, and this is the third NOT gate, so it'll be 30. We know our output wire is NOT 30. We have only one input, and this is coming from A. So that is that for that line. We'll have a comma, and that way we can code another NOT gate down here. It's going to be NOT gate 40. We are having an output of the wire not 40, and our input is B. And then we'll add another comma, and we'll come down here, and we'll call it our last AND gate. It's going to be the U11A, and so we are going to have not gate, this is 50. We know our output wire is not 50, and our input is D. I also just realized that um, it doesn't affect really, or it doesn't hurt the code at least, but we don't, for the wires, we don't need this OR2 because when I was thinking OR2, I was thinking the output wire of our U5A. That's the last OR gate at the top. We don't need that because that's F1. And the same thing for this wire right here. This OR10, the only OR gate in our second function, because that's actually wire F2. And if you look closely at the code, we never even use that. So we don't need those two. But this is what our code will look like. And all we have to do now is end it. So we're going to come down here. And we're just going to type end module. And then we will not add a semicolon. For this, we don't need a semicolon. And so this is our code. We're going to come up to here. And we're going to start the compilation. We'll click yes to this. We want to make sure that the name is the same as the name we have up here. So this name and this name as well as this name should match. We want to make sure that it's stored in the same folder and we're just going to click save and now it's going to run through the tasks. And of course, since I am doing this live, I am prone to errors. I am not perfect. We do have a semicolon here and it is because I never added a semicolon for this last NOT gate. Uh, I didn't have one here, and it looks like we got an error because of it. So we have to add a semicolon to end this line. That is super important. We can come up and start compiling again. We'll click yes, and now it'll run through our tasks once more. We've passed all our tasks, which is pretty awesome without any errors. The warnings don't matter. And now we can make our test bench file from here. We're going to click the file, we're going to click Verlog HDL, and we're going to click OK, and now we have a new file here. Now to make our test bench, um, what we're going to do is we are going to have module, we are going to have the name of our lab, lab10, but we are going to have underscore TB parentheses for test bench, and then a semicolon to end the line. Now we need to have code for our inputs, so this is reg, we are going to have a comma b comma c comma d and then we are going to have inputs and then we are going to have our outputs and these are our wires so we're going to have f1 and f2 these are our only outputs and make sure that you have a semicolon right here as well after this we are going to need our lab 10 uut and then we need parentheses and then inside of these parentheses also make sure there's a semicolon at the end we are going to have our inputs and our outputs, but it's going to be a little funky. So we're going to have dot, and we are going to have our first input A, parenthesis, the input again, and then ending parenthesis, and then we're going to do this for all the others. So we're going to have dot B, parenthesis, B, end parenthesis, comma, for the next one, dot C, parenthesis, C, end parenthesis, dot D, and then parenthesis, D, 
end parenthesis. We're not done yet though, because we also need to do our outputs. So we're gonna have a comma, dot F1, and then parenthesis, F1, and then comma, dot F2, and then parenthesis F2, and then our two ending parentheses. And from here, we're going to have initial, and then this is begin. So initial, begin. We're initializing this, and now we're going to need to make a truth table. Um, I've included a picture below. This is also from lab 10. It's actually from my lab eight part of my lab report. And this is where we have the input and the output of our truth table. And we basically need to code this. So to code this, we are going to have to code a lot and it's going to look like this. So if we are to compare all of these rows, it will actually be the same input as the one that we found in our truth tables. And for this is for lab eight. And so we're just gonna have all of these and then we're going to have a hashtag or pound five afterwards and there's a semicolon there. And so this is just coding in the truth table right here. After we do that, we're gonna come down here, we're gonna have a dollar sign finish, and then we are going to have end, and then we are going to have end module. Also, there is a semicolon after finish, but not after end or after module. And so this is gonna be what our code looks like. We're gonna to want to come up to compile and click start compilation. We're gonna click yes to save this, and we're going to name this lab 10, and um, then underscore TB, and then press save. And now it's going to run through all of our tasks. And again, I have some errors because it's really late right now and I'm coding on a 13 inch MacBook. But from what I can see, it's that I forgot that there are three I's in initial. Now that I have spelled that correctly, we can run and click yes to save again and see if it'll go through the tasks properly this time. We've run through all of our tasks and we are successful this time. So we have done everything, we completed it, all looks good. Recap though, this is our code for the lab 10 and this is our code for the lab 10 test bench. Now we're gonna go want to go back to our lab 10. We're gonna go to tools, we're gonna click run simulation tool and then RTL simulation. From here at the bottom of our window, a model sim will pop up, we're gonna click on this if the waveform is not here, sometimes it's not, you wanna to go to view, and then you want to go to wave and make sure that's checked. From here, we're gonna click compile up here, and then compile again. We're gonna go up to whatever directory that we want. We're gonna find our .v, our lab10.v. We're gonna compile it. Zero error, zero warnings, that's great. We're gonna compile our lab10 underscore tv, our test bench zero error zero warning that is also great we can click done we're going to go to simulate up here we'll click start simulation and then we are going to click work and then we're going to click lab 10 tb to run our test bench we'll then click ok and then we will have all of these uh, items imported here we can hit control or command and then select all of these values and then we are going to drag them over here now after we do this, all we gotta do is come up here where we have run and just click run. We will not finish and then it'll probably bring us back to here but we can easily just go back to wave. Right click on wave. We are going to click zoom full right here and then we have our wave. And if we go through this, uh, we can match our outputs with the truth table and verify that it is correct. And looking at the truth table, it looks all good. So that is all for this lab for the wave, for the code, and we've did it. Good job.